Welcome to the future. Welcome back. Today's episode is the future, and it's really exciting. We're just going to riff on some really big ideas, so sit back, expand your imagination. Here we go. If you thought it was a wild idea that your cortex isn't really in charge and it was really your midbrain unconsciously running the show, it's really going to blow your mind when I tell you about the microbiome in your gut. You have more bacterial cells living in your gut than you have human cells in your entire body. And those bacterial cells are working 24-7. What they're doing, we don't really know. The science of the microbiome is only just now beginning. It won't be your genetics we need to be looking at in 15 years. It'll be the bacterial genetics of your microbiome. How are they going to interact with medicine? How is the medicine going to change that population? What neurotransmitters are they making? And which of those are being absorbed in your gut and sent to your brain? There's already good evidence from mouse studies and some human studies that things like appetite can be changed by changing microbiome. And there are very good mouse studies showing that appetite for drugs can be changed by changing the microbiome. It may be possible one day to treat addiction with something called a fecal transplant. And yes, it means exactly what it sounds like. As sophisticated as it seems to us today to be able to individualize and sequence medical treatment for addiction using genetics, imagine what we're going to be able to do in the future when we don't even need medicines. We're going to find ways to use electricity at very low voltages and magnetics across the skull without piercing the skull, we're not implanting any electrodes in someone's brain, to affect the actual production of neurotransmitters and the firing of cells inside the brain. Now, there are already early studies to show efficacy with magnetic fields and addiction. Not all of those are painless, not all of those are inexpensive, not all of those are ready for prime time. But there's enough of a hint that tells us with a few more years of research and a few more years of refining the process, we're going to get outcomes that we don't even dream of today. Right now, the kinds of genetics we look at are the same genetics you were born with, the same genetics you're going to die with. They don't change at all any day during the lifespan. You can't change the genetic makeup of an individual. But you can change the expression of that genetic makeup. What genes are turned on, which copy of what genes are turned on, which ones are turned off. This is called epigenetics. It is a growing and important field. And right now, it's focused on huge, big issues like drugs, and trauma because that's where the big effect size is. And when you're doing research and you have to produce a paper or you're not going to get funded for your next project, you look at where you're going to find a big answer. But the truth about epigenetics is your epigenetics is affected by everything. What time you wake up in the morning, what you ate for breakfast, what the weather was today, who you live with, what their microbiome is, what your microbiome is. Do you have one dog or three cats? All of that stuff is going to change your genetic expression. In the future, variables we haven't even thought of yet are going to be found to be hugely important in deciding who needs what intervention for any illness, including addiction. We're going to with the help of artificial intelligence, find out from each individual, for that individual, 
just what they need to change the expression of their own genetics, their own epigenetics, and the interaction with their microbiome. The future for this is bright and not as far away as most of us think. There is no one treatment that works for everybody. If someone's selling you the one treatment that everyone needs, you're being sold snake oil. That's the only thing that works for everybody. We need individualized treatment. And we've talked about a number of things that is going to help individualize that treatment. And with all that individualization is going to come decentralization. Instead of having to go to a centralized residential rehab, we're going to be able to decentralize treatment. First, outpatient centers, which we can already do today. Already today, there's almost no need for residential rehabilitation. That was a pre-medical intervention, and it isn't going to survive a modern view of the neurobiology of addiction. First, insurance companies will stop paying for it, and then it will go away. But our future is even brighter. There's not going to be a need for outpatient treatment centers much longer. And then treatment's going to go down to the individual practitioner. And eventually, where all these advances are going to lead, with all this individualization, is that treatment is going to happen in your life, on your cell phone, with your own artificial intelligence addiction specialist in your pocket, giving you exactly what it is you need when you need it at a very low cost. Imagine instead of spending months and thousands of dollars going to rehab, addiction was treatable for 25, 50 bucks and it just happened every day in the background and it was no big deal. That's part of what we mean when we say end addiction as a problem. People may still have addiction, but it's not going to be a problem. With all these advances we're talking about, it's probably crossed your mind that somebody's going to have an awful lot of information about you, and you may be getting a little worried for your future privacy. Well, it could happen that way. But we won't end addiction if someone tries to end it that way, with a centralized body having all the information about you and telling you what to do. It's just not going to work. It would have a negative feedback loop on the dopamine receptor density, that would fall, tone would fall, and any treatment that was attempted wouldn't work, and addiction would get worse, not better. We've tried that already. Most of our large, centralized, federal groups do that very thing. But with the future comes great advances in encrypted distributed ledger technology, which you guys may have heard as blockchain. But it is actually so much more than blockchain. The future can give us each an individualized, encrypted digital existence where we can decide who we share what with. And we don't share it unless we want to. No one else needs to have our information for addiction treatment to work. Once we get it on a distributed platform like treatment on your cell phone, that will, in order for it to work, have to come with privacy assurances, and it will. That technology is just about there and will probably be available before we're able to get an artificial intelligence on your phone that will help with treating addiction. So by the time we create that treatment, we'll already have the privacy in infrastructure in place. What about prevention? How's the future going to affect our efforts to prevent cases of addiction? Well, all we've had up to now is just say no. Not only do we tell people to not use drugs, we do things to make those drugs illegal. But now that we understand that epigenetics aren't just affected by cocaine and heroin and trauma and big things, but are affected by every little thing in your life. Why are we making 
some things the focus of our prevention efforts. Now that we understand that addiction is a primary brain illness, why are we focusing on preventing the effects of that instead of preventing the illness itself? So what could we be doing? Well, we could be doing early genetic testing in order to have people's genetics available in case they get symptomatic, we'll know where the problem lies and we'll know quickly. And also, with a better view of addiction, understanding it as primary and the symptoms that aren't drug-related as primary, we can start looking for those symptoms at a very early age, especially in those children who are at risk. And then we can give them specific treatment. I know a person in long-term recovery who says, I wouldn't change a thing about my past because it brought me to where I am today and I don't regret a thing. But I often wonder, what if someone had told me about my genetics and MTHFR when I was five years old? Would my first cigarette have done what it did? Would my first drink have done what it did? How would my life have been different and would I take that opportunity away from my child. Well, we're not going to have to choose in the future. As more and more people learn about the exact nature of addiction as a primary midbrain illness, we're going to focus less and less on late behaviors in the illness like drug taking and more and more on those early symptoms where we can really make a big effect. The future for prevention is brighter than it's ever been. I asked you last week to look up the Abbey Singer, and if you did, you found out that the Abbey Singer is the second to last shot of the day in a movie production. The last shot of the day is the martini. This is our martini, and it's as close to a martini as I'm going to get. I wanted to take this opportunity to thank you for putting up with the dog snoring and watching my desk plant grow, and spending the last 20 weeks with us looking at ending addiction. It's an important topic. It's an important conversation. And I want to really reach out with appreciation to all those people who shared the videos with others, who commented on the videos, who interacted with us on social media, especially people who have taken the brave stand to put forward their own story or the story of a family member that they love. There's a lot of pain right now because we look at addiction as a cortical choice, as a set of behaviors, and we amplify that pain through our ignorance, our disrespect, and our callousness toward people who have the illness. I really do foresee a day when addiction isn't a problem in American life anymore. Yes, people will have addiction, but we'll treat it in a regular doctor's office and with regular office visits and no shame. That's a day for all of us to work toward. Keep commenting on the videos, keep sharing them. And if you've watched this desk plant, you might be noticing that season two is just around the corner. See you then. Be well. Because it ain't going to get any better than that.